Good afternoon, allies. I uh, am back. I'm back. I'm back in town. Back on my my schedule. Back doing my job. Feels good, man. Feels good to be back. Uh, particularly after I basically totally pulled everything out and, and everything worked and got to go in get a little bit of kudos you know that kind of stuff and it's the week before Christmas so the office is pretty much a dead zone anyway but you know you get the idea uh, anyway so i um, gonna head over to Osh right now and then I'm gonna go home and I'm do a little bit more work from home on my laptop because I just have to update PowerPoint slides a lot of my job is PowerPoint does slides these days change of plans uh, I got off the freeway a little bit early. I'm gonna head over to the Cerritos Mall. That's insane, right? I don't even know why I'm going to the mall. I'm um, gonna stop by the Apple Store. I wanna see the new MacBook Pros, and I wanna see if I can get somebody to load Final Cut on it for me and, and try and cut together a video real quick. And yeah, I wanna see how quick they are, because I might be looking to upgrade. Not so bad, kind of in the back of the parking lot over here. It's okay, get a little walk in. A little walk-in, 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 Christopher Walken. Okay, so that was an interesting endeavor. Uh, I'll look into it. I'm a little bummed out about all those USB ports they sacked on that thing and the Thunderbolt ports that they also got rid of. Anyway, something cool. Think about that in the future. I'm, uh, I've now been drafted to go pick up Ben, so Osh is out for today, or maybe I'll go after I get him. We'll see. <clears throat> hey guys, so something happened to me today. I walked into the bathroom to stall at work, and this was sitting sitting right on the toilet paper dispenser. This is what's affectionately referred to as a chick track. A chick track is a small little pamphlet that tells a religious story. Usually somebody who's doing something wrong with their life faces eternal damnation, sees the errors of their ways and then repents. It is the one of the, from my point of view, one of the most annoying ways people proselytize. <laughs> But before I dive into my rant on this particular form of proselytizing these chick tracks, I wanted to share this uh, can that I got. It's a can of draft beer jelly bellies. And they come in these, I guess, little triangular pouches. I'm gonna try some of these right now. My mom gave me this. This is insane, I've never even heard of something like this. So, whoa. They smell like wart. Wow. Whoa. Um, this tastes like beer and honey. It tastes a lot like mead. More mead than anything, actually. Mmm. Yeah. Don't let kids eat these. It smells awful though. Um, don't let kids eat these. Make them alcoholics. Wow. They're pretty good. Thanks, Mom. So here's what pissed me off about Chick Tracks. Chick Tracks are the Christian's version of the door-to-door -door Mormons or door-to-door -door Je Jehovah's Witness. It's a concept that these people will insert them into your life in order to tell you or explain to you how you don't know something or you're wrong and that your ways will lead to eternal torture for the rest of eternity, right? That's what this one is. This is your life. This one is the, uh, this one is the example of, of a guy who um, thought he lived a good life, but when he, was, when he died and was taken up to be judged, um, he found out that that was not the case. Where is the, where's the one, this one's, this side's really good. He's not on the list. 
you get out. You done. And they, they like to put in these little little excerpts from the Bible using the Bible directly. The problem I have, <laughs> the problem, and they have chick.com, you can send him uh, $12.95 and you can get a sample assortment and price list for chick track publications. Now, it is my understanding that chick has died. Um, I like that there's a, a section here that you can put your name. It says compliments of, compliments of, and then the person's name who decided to give this to you. Surprisingly, the person did not put their name on this one because I probably would have wanted to go talk to them and actually try and interview them and get some thought out of like what they're thinking. Now I get it. All people, all religious people can take the higher road on this one and say they're just really concerned and looking out for the people of the world and want them to live in eternal happiness um, like they plan on living in eternal happiness. The problem, and this is squarely where my rant is, my problem is, is that no one is sure, um, except that everyone is sure that their religion is the right one, but no one can be sure that their religion is the right one. So if they can't be sure their religion is the right one, isn't the safe bet to follow every religion and follow doctrines of every religion, not just put all of your chips on one religion's uh, form of the afterlife or what you gotta do to get into the afterlife, I always made the argument, I make the argument every time when I talk to somebody, I am an atheist against all religions. You are an atheist against all religions, but one, your religion. And there's, you know, some variation of that. A lot of, there's some Christians that believe that um, Buddhism and those two can go hand in hand. Okay, fine, whatever. But the point is, is that you, you've, you've put all your chips into into one basket, this basket of Christianity being the right option or, or Jehovah's Witness being the right option or Mormonism being the right option. And that's fine, but when you go around sending these out or going door to door or, or proselytizing openly in, in the public square, like I've seen many times when I go to Ranch 99, there's a usually some Asian person, I don't know if they're Korean or Chinese, that's got a vest on and he's openly proselytizing and, and, and talking about the, the good the good work and the and you know the 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 plan that God has for you. The the thing is is if you're going out there and you're it so this is me, this is my personal feeling. If you're going out there and you're telling people how to live, like to actually change their life and to give them have them follow a set of doctrines, a set of books, a set of rules. You're going out there to tell them to do that based off of this payoff that you can't actually guarantee. To me, that is hubris. It's, it's a form of you don't know something, but you believe it so much, you have so much faith in it that you're willing to kind of manipulate, in some cases, people to believe the way you believe because you think that payoff is so great. You have no evidence for this, but you're willing you're willing to try and talk people into living a, um, a lifestyle the way you think life should be led or the way that a book tells you to live your life. And you'll, you'll do everything you can up until the point of telling them they're going to burn in the fires of, of eternal damnation to get them to do that. And you, you, you guise it into this concept of you're saving them from this eternal damnation. The reality is, is that you don't know that you're not going there because you might be picking the wrong religion. You might be following the wrong, I don't know, practices. Maybe there was a, a screw up in the translation of the King James Bible, whatever. The point is, is I don't want to go into big tirade on this. And, and again, I'm talking about people who live, leave chick tracks on, a, on the shitter paper dispenser, right? These are the people I'm talking to. People who go door to door. The people who proselytize and try and make you feel bad about yourself in the, in in public places. This is nothing against Christianity. This is nothing against religion. I don't care. I only care when you seek to mess with my life or enter into my life and tell me how my way of life is wrong. Who are you that thinks that you can go around and do that because you think you've got this higher power that's going to give out... Um, free whatever in the future, eternal life and, and beautiful times, whatever, that you can't prove, that you've known it of, but you believe it so badly that you'll go out there and you'll try and persuade people to think the way you do. I hate that. I hate that concept. I hate that mindset. And frankly, I could apply that to lots of things. People who go out there and um, pushed for 
push for global warming laws to be implemented, push for plastic bags, banning of plastic bags to save the, the world, right? We have no evidence that it's going to save the world. All we know is that you have a, uh, a something that you're pushing for and you're going to manipulate your way to do it. And it doesn't matter who it is. You're going to mess with everybody's life in the process. And if you can't do it through hook, then you'll do it through the crook, right? What is it? The, by hook or crook? Yeah, I think that's the line. Anyway, that that's all. Um, fairly blasé, fairly low-key rant uh, for a Monday here, but I thought this was an interesting thing. And if you haven't seen Chick Tracks before, there are a bunch of channels that actually go through these page by page, and some that are atheists and they rant on them, and some that just just record them for posterity sex. You can go look at those, uh, and I'll post a link to to one of the ones I found. So there's a uh, there's a band chick track. It is pretty gnarly. I will post the link to that one. It involves molestation. Oh, Edison's awake. I gotta go, guys. Question of the day: Have you ever heard of a chick track? Um, do, you, do you like them? I think they're almost funny and humorous in a way. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Edison says hello. All right, guys.